Like, well, what's this girl? Uh, Meghan Markle. Ooh. Oh. And I was like, did she Ooh. hit the light skin lottery? <laughs> hit the fucking light skin lottery and still going off complaining. Acting all dumb like she don't know nothing. Going on Oprah, I didn't know. Mm. I had no idea how racist I they know. were. It's the royal family. I found that weird. You didn't Google this? I know. <laughs> what the fuck is she talking about? She didn't know. The fuck that is how the I knew she was family. lying. I'm They're sorry. the original racists. <laughs> they invented colonialism. Yeah. They're the OGs of racism. They're the Sugar Hill Gang of racism. <laughs> like the hip hop, the hip it, the hip it, the hip hip hop, and you don't that stop spike, of please? racism. The fuck is she talking about? I didn't know. That's like marrying into the Budweiser family and going, they drink a lot. The fuck is she talking about? This motherfucker <laughs> yeah. is invested in slavery like it was Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? They're so racist. They're so racist. Some of that shit she went through was not racism. It was just some <laughs> in-law shit. <laughs> Sometimes it's just some in-law shit. Cause she's complaining. I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? The Oprah, they're so racist. They wanted to know how brown the baby was going to be. They're so racist. They wanted to know how brown the baby was going to be. I'm like, that's not racist. Because even black people want to know. Shit, we check behind them ears. That's a scientific test. Because <laughs> you got to see what kind of black child you going to get. Is this a Steph Curry baby? Or a Draymond Green baby? <laughs> And that Draymond baby gonna have a hard life. The Draymond black baby. That nigga dog. He sneak up on you black. We at Draymond right here. Hey! Hey! Put a bell on, nigga. Put that a bell. is so bad. That is so bad. Pause, pause, pause. Yes, I have to say something at this point, right? Okay, I remember reading the um when this wasn't when i was so happy harry was marrying a you know a black woman and not even black because she's biracial so i'm acknowledging her white side her father her mother is black her father is white Meghan markle i was so happy i was like oh my goodness it's fantastic right and i was also happy for her because i felt she was not a novice in the sense that she's an actress and she's a biracial actress in America. Now, you know how hard it is. Remember when this Oscar So White thing was trending? For any actress, first of all, to become an actress, a Hollywood actress in itself is very, very hard. Then a biracial Hollywood act is even harder, right? Because of the things you hear about racism and hierarchy and classism, that sort of thing, right? So I was like, okay, great. She's an actress. She, she's already tough. She's had to fight or something at some point in her life she's had to climb you know heels to get to where she wants it's just like someone being in a military or going to war and then you're coming back and you're seeing uh maybe kids fighting in the park you can't be traumatized like I, you know what i mean you can't be like oh my god this is terrible because you've been to vietnam you survived world war whatever and you came back, kids wrestling in the park, even a boxing ring, even if it would, you know, hurt you to see people, it's not going to send you over the edge. Please, let's just be realistic. I know somebody's going to say, oh, it's going to be P PTSD. That's not what I'm talking about. All right. So with Meghan Markle, 
when they were talking about her and how, you know, talking about prior to the wedding to Harry, he said something about her as a teenager or in, in grade school writing because she saw an advert that she didn't approve of about maybe women doing laundry or something like that. And then she wrote to the company and told them to change the advert. Now, any child who at that age can already identify that kind of floor. When I was 10 years old, I wasn't looking and seeing, oh, it's a man, woman washing the thing or a man washing the thing. I wasn't looking at those gender lines. I wasn't looking at, hmm, is that a black? I was just looking at the commercials, singing the songs with them. At that same age, we grew up in, I grew up in Nigeria. So I didn't have that racist experience. And that is the truth. What people experience most times in Nigeria is tribalism, different tribes or classism if you're not rich enough or something. Nobody identifies you and goes, goes like, oh, you're black and I'm white. No, because the president is black, the governors are black, the cleaner is black, the wealthy is black, the poor is black, everybody is black in my country. So you, there wasn't a racist feel. I didn't know what it was till I went and my cousins who went abroad I mean, my whole life, I've only had one racist experience. And that is the truth. I've talked about it before. I didn't even realize it was. It was someone else who had violently returned it to the person. I was like, oh, is this what this person is saying? Right? That is it. Because sometimes when a person touches your hair in my country, Nigeria, it's a thing of endearment. It's not a thing to take offense by. If if someone touches your hair and you're at, violently angry and you're Nigerian, they'll think you've lost your mind because that is nothing to be upset about. It's a term of endearment. When you like something, you touch it and you caress it. That's how we grew up. I come here into to America or to Canada, they're telling you that, oh, when a white woman touches your hair, you should tell her no. I said, why? You see, that she's telling you it's beautiful. It, it, it is beautiful. That's how I grew up. Anyway, back to the story. Meghan Markle identified the flaw in that advert as a child. She saw a system and could identify what was wrong with that system at age what? 10, 12? And you're telling me as a 40-year-old woman with all the degrees you got living in America, you did not know anything about the royal family. Stop it. Stop it now. Stop it. Stop it, girl. Stop it. You didn't know it was that bad. The research you did as a little teenage girl, you didn't do it. In Nigeria, when you're about to marry a man, there are many things your parents tell you to go and find out. You just don't marry somebody, especially when it's not your first marriage. This is her second marriage. She's been married before. You didn't do any investigation about the man. You didn't know anything about him. You wanted to just walk in love and blind. Stop it. When she said that, it was clear to me that she told lies. Why she's telling her lies is her business, but that alone is a lie. There is no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. She didn't know about the royal family. She didn't know about the culture, the British culture. She didn't know about, no, 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 no. There is no way, sister. There is no way. <laughs> oh no 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 even snow white when snow white woke up she was like it must have been a prince that kissed me for the apple to drop out wasn't that snow white why did she think it was one of the dwarfs why why stop it stop it girl so that's when i knew that mm -mm. there's a there's two sides but it doesn't justify how she was treated no that's not what it is. But she wasn't walking in blind. Mm -mm, no, no, no. Even us who grew up in Nigeria, how much more it will not say we're walking into the royal family blind? How much more someone who grew up in a country where they are killing black people in the streets, where, and you're saying you don't understand, you don't know, she wasn't, I would have informed her better. Another thing we talked about in my family when we discussed Meghan Markle and, you know, her whole thing was we are very, I don't know if I'm using a lot of sim, 
Nigerian or my background, we have so many sayings, Africans, we have pro so many proverbs. But whenever someone wants to marry, one of the proverbs that our mother tells us, always be wary of the man who does not acknowledge anybody in his family. If he has no respect for the people in his family, all of them, there, there's not one person he says, and he's taking you, the man has taken you, this is the person I respect. Remember that you're walking into a place that has no fence, that you have, that you will have no one to report him if he has, because the way we feel is families getting married, families joining, right? So whenever, when I marry my husband, I know who his mentor is. I know who the person in his family, that if he does anything that I really don't like and I can't reach him, I go to that person and say, please call call him to order. And he knows who my own mentor is. He knows that outside my mom, if he doesn't want to tell my mom, there's another auntie, there's someone else that I admire that he can go meet. That's how we get married. And things like that, we, we always have those exchanges. What I'm saying is that you, 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 in Megan's life, when she's married, she was getting married. She, it was as if she cut off everybody except her mom. That, that is a red flag. And to young people getting married and you're like, oh, no, there's nobody in his family that is good. That includes him, hon. That includes him. I'm sorry to say you have to. You, it's a red flag. That when someone is, they have no bestie, they have no this, they're suddenly, it wasn't prior to knowing you, she was always on good terms with her dad. Prior to knowing you, she was on good terms with her sisters and stepsisters. Prior to knowing you, she was on good terms with everyone. And suddenly she marries you, the superstar, the prince, and everybody she cuts off. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. That they're all doing something bad. All of them. All of them, 10, 10 family members, all of them, only her mother stood with her, only. Uh, um, we say that the easier it is to, for a person to walk away from their family, that's how easy they will walk away from you. I'm telling you, we say it in Nigeria. Like when a man walks away, turns his back on his mother, his father, his brother, his sisters, his cousins, aunts, his uncles, when they decide to turn their back on you, you'll be, you'll be shocked with that same ease. With that same ease that they discarded their family members, that discardment is waiting for you. The pain that was done to the first wife is waiting for the second wife. You know how women walk in, no, 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 he was, it, he is relationship with his first wife. It's, it's their business. They had their trauma. They had their, did, 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 did. you don't care. You don't want to hear. You don't want to know. Whether it's true or it's a lie. You don't want to, you don't know, you don't want to hear. That same disregard that he gave is waiting. It's waiting. It's that simple. Victim blaming. I, I've di digressed, but at least I've gotten the length of my tongue. Yes. It's so important. People in relationships, they don't, they don't, you don't, how can you just, nobody is an island. Where did you come from? 